you guys. So today's video is going to be chock full of tips and tricks all about hooded eye, smoky eye, eyeshadow tricks. Hooded eye, eyeshadow hacks. I don't know, a lot of hooded eye stuff today. But I do think that no matter what your eye shape is, I do, I do think there's a good little bit of information here that anyone can utilize and benefit from. But I've never done a video dedicated strictly to hooded eyes, which is kind of interesting because when I first got into makeup and started learning a lot about it, and wanted to improve my skills, this was many years ago, I would get so frustrated trying to replicate the looks that I saw all over the place and didn't understand that they weren't translating on me the way they were translating on some of the other beauty gurus and makeup artists I, were, I was watching because I was watching this happen on people who had a pronounced crease or bigger eyes and that just wasn't what I was working with and I vividly remember kind of being like, well, I guess I just can't wear eyeshadow, but... That's hilarious now because I love eyeshadow and I wear a ton of it. So today we're going to talk about all the tips and tricks that I've learned. And um, some of them are brand new. Some are things I've never shared. And some of them are kind of old standby favorites that maybe you missed me talking about in videos of the past. Or maybe we just need to bone up on some techniques. Either way, I think you're going to learn a lot today or that is my hope. You guys let me know if there's any other technique based videos that you would like me to put out in the near future. And I will definitely get started working on them. But yeah, get those eyeshadow palettes, get those eyeshadow brushes out and let's figure this thing out together so let's just get started okay you guys so as you can tell I have my brows done and my primer on and this is a tip I give everyone not just for people who are trying to up their eyeshadow game but I kind of give it to everybody because to me it's very difficult for me to put an eye look together until my brows are done oftentimes I will kind of extend this area with shadow or I'll bring it down so knowing what my brows are gonna look like gives me a good starting point and a guide to use another benefit of doing your brows first is that I tend to carve out the underside of my brow using a light colored concealer it keeps this area really really bright and if you have hooded eyes, part of the struggle is that you have to create definition. So one of the mistakes I used to make when I would do my makeup before I got it to a place that I really liked it is I would kind of bringing it up a little too high or I was keeping it too low. So when I would take it too low, it automatically made my eyes look a little bit more squinty, a little bit smaller. When I took it up too high, it kind of did the same thing. So it's about finding that sweet spot of where your natural crease is and then using that to create a crease where you don't have one. So this is a trick I showed on Patreon the other day. It's not something you should do every day. You definitely don't need to be tugging on the skin around your eye regularly, but just to give you a good starting point for where your crease or I guess your orbital bone is the closest thing that you're gonna have to go off of is to take an eyelash curler, put your lashes in it, squeeze, and pull down. I really don't know if you can see it on camera, so I'm trying to figure out. I'm pulling really hard. Oh, you can't see. I don't know if you guys can tell. It doesn't look like you can tell on camera. But if I have my eyelashes in an eyelash curler and I kind of pull my lid taut, I can see it's right there where my orbital bone is. And why this is important is when it comes to doing makeup, it's fun to contour and change things about our faces, but honestly, the most flattering way to do your makeup is to work with what you already have and enhance it as opposed to trying to like wipe the whole sl slate clean and starting over. So knowing where my bone is, I mean, you can feel it too. So my orbital bone starts pretty low and then it goes up like this. So that tends to be the shape that I create with my eyeshadow. So it starts out here and I go up because I wish you guys could see it on camera. I can see it on person. You'll have to just try it for yourself and see if it works for you. But like I said, if I just pull on this a little bit, I can see, can you see? Oh, it's right there. That tends to be where I create my crease. I can't guarantee that trick will work on everyone, but at the very least, as I just said, you can feel where your orbit, orbital bone is, and that's my crease for all intents and purposes. Most people who have a defined crease, they tend to have the crease area where their orbital bone 
is. Okay, I've said that way too many times, so I'm gonna move on. All right, so step one for me, if you have hooded eyes or for anyone else, um, is to take a big fluffy brush with a transition color. People with a more defined crease usually tend to just kind of follow the existing crease to get it the color they want it to be. So they might start off with a smaller brush, but for me, if you have hooded eyes, taking a really big fluffy brush and using that to deposit your transition shade is kind of like laying the groundwork for the shape you're going to create using your eyeshadow. Usually I'm trying to make my eyes look a little bit more awake, a little more open, a little more bright. So shape is very important for me. If you take your fluffy brush, the fluffiest brush you're gonna use in your entire makeup application, I'm gonna be replicating um, a similar technique that I taught you guys in my eyeshadow 101 and eye brush 101 videos. I will link them down below. I've heard they're incredibly helpful. But essentially your lightest color goes on the fluffiest brush that you're going to use and I will call that color number one and brush number one. And for hooded eye people, this is helpful because I'm just following along where my orbital bone is. So once again, going back to the little eyelash curler trick, you can kind of see it, I think now, maybe, I don't know. But this is where I'm taking that eyeshadow. It's really just giving you like home base. Now, the main thing you wanna do with hooded eyes, in my opinion, is you wanna keep any darker colors a little bit lower than this transition shade. Why? Because once again, we are creating shape. We don't have bossy, uh, easy to do eyelids. And in my opinion, you can easily create it as long as you kind of have a map to show you the way. So one thing I do too, like I said before, is I'm gonna follow the natural curvature of my orbital bone. And as I said, it's really low here and it goes up like this. So that is the shape I always create with my eyeshadow because it follows along with what I naturally have. But your orbital bone and your bone structure in general is going to be different than mine. So I do recommend, as I said before, try that eyelash curler trick and try to just feel along where your bones naturally are. Another thing I do for my eyes, once again, I can't guarantee this will work for all hooded eyes, but I've noticed that with my eye shape in particular, if I take eyeshadow like this straight across the lid, as opposed to up, like there's a huge difference in the way I'm moving my brush up, or you can go like this. If I bring eyeshadow in this way, it kind of like closes me off and makes me look a little angry. I don't know. It's not, it doesn't give me that big eyed, bright eyed effect that keeping my transition shade kind of up this direction does. And then bonus tip, you could take a little bit of this transition color right here and start a small, soft little nose contour situation, but that's for everyone. You don't have to have hooded eyes to do it. So I do wanna talk quickly about eyeshadow brushes that I recommend for people with hooded eyes. I talked about this on Patreon yesterday as well. Basically what you wanna look out for with eye brushes, if you do have hooded eyes, is a tip on the brush, a very pronounced tip. Because once again, we're using our eyeshadows to create a crease and create definition. So something that has a more, like this, which has a more round, kind of fluffy tip where most of the bristles are just kind of evenly distributed throughout the entire brush. This would work well to blend shadow, but in terms of placing it exactly where you want it to go, tips are kind of gonna be your best friend. So the brushes I use every single time I do my makeup, I could actually just use these and it would be fine. The Wayne Goss number three, and if you notice, very pronounced tip. I kind of hope it's doing its justice on camera because as I said, it just fits here right along. This is my orbital bone once again. It just sits right here super comfortably and I can definitely control it, making sure the color doesn't go any higher or any lower than I intend for it to go. And that's also true with this one. This is the JH32 from the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe collection. It has a very pronounced little tip right here, so it's able to do the exact same thing. Do you see how it's just hugging that crease area that I've created with that first eyeshadow? Same thing with this brush here. I really recommend this one for hooded eyes. I think it's kind of ideal. This is the MAC, I think it's called the 221. The number's rubbed off, so I can't really tell anymore. 
Once again, it hugs that crease. I can control exactly where this color is going, exactly where the placement will be. That's kind of the main trick, I would say, with eyeshadow. I get tons of comments, people telling me that their eyeshadow looks muddy. When you guys say muddy, you guys tell me that it looks like all, it's just like one kind of blob of color. There's no definition or gradient. And that's probably because you're not changing your brushes with your color. You don't need 105 different brushes to create a look. This is four brushes I use every time I do my eyeshadow and it gets the job done. I really don't need anything more than this for my lid and crease work, but moving on, I'm gonna take a slightly smaller brush, but it still has some fluff to it because it's going in with my next darkest color. And I'm going to be moving from lightest to darkest on biggest to small, bigger to smaller brushes. And I'm hugging just below where I placed that initial product. So you can still see the first color, but now we're moving into the next color. And as I said, I'm just following what my orbital bone does naturally, which is it starts lower out here and it moves up this way. So down, and up. Once again, everyone's eyelids are gonna be a little different. You're gonna to have to figure out what your shape is. So don't mimic this exact motion if that's not what your eyes do. But I just follow along that line. I also like to drag this in right here. We'll get into lower lash lines and your outer corner momentarily because the thing with having hooded eyes is when you're looking dead on at someone, you can't really see anything that's going on in this entire area of the eye. You can see it when I look down, but looking dead on, you can really only see this outer corner. So that's why I tend to kind of beef up the outer corner and the lower lash line so much so that when I'm looking dead on at you, you can still see like that smoky kind of effect that I'm usually going for. So to kind of get that party started, I like to start pressing down in this outer corner and just dragging this color in, up and over, just like the first original color we laid down. Next, I'm going in with a slightly smaller brush, slightly darker color, and I'm just starting once again to work this right along the area. I've already laid down color, but I'm going just a little bit lower. When you have hooded eyes, I feel like you need to be mindful of the fact, particularly if you're gonna use a darker color in a look, which is what I'm doing today, you need to have something for this to blend up into. If you don't bring it in a little bit, once again, like I said, my motion is not this, it's this. If you bring it down this way, you're gonna do that kind of curving in thing I was telling you about. But if you bring it up and over, just so, this gives your darker color something to blend up into. So be mindful of that. Over the years, I've learned how to do tons of different eyeshadow looks. Some of them I'm better at than others. Some of them I like to do more than others. But overall, I think the thing with any eye shape you have to keep in mind, and this is true for hooded eyes a lot of the times, it's best to kind of figure out which eyeshadow looks flatter you the most. And a good example of an eyeshadow look that does not flatter my eye shape, and I don't know if I think it flatters a lot of hooded eyes, would be a spotlight smoky eye or a halo smoky eye. Those are the smoky eyes that have a, like a little bit of brightness here. Basically what that's doing is making your eye look like a ball, like a very clear round ball. And if you look at my eye and you look at my eyelid, there's nothing round about it. It's actually kind of flat. So I mean, I could do that. It would be a lot more work. And I find that nine times out of 10 when I do a spotlight smoky eye, you can't even see the spotlight effect anyway, looking straight on at me. And I feel like eyeshadow should create a shape and you can pick whatever shape it is that you prefer. But like I said, for me, I like to create a more awake, open, bright eyed effect. If you have more rounded, bigger eyes, I find most people prefer to have something slanted that gives like a cat eye kind of effect because they have height and they wanna balance it out with width. We have height usually in the form of our eyelid, but the size of our eye is a little bit smaller, so I once again use eyeshadow to kind of frame it and make it look bigger. And the best example I can give for this, which I'll get into later with lashes, I'll probably circle back to this again, 
if you had a wall in your house, okay, and let's say you wanted to hang a painting on your wall. So this is the painting you're hanging on your wall. The painting by itself is only gonna take up so much space on that wall because the painting is only so big. But when you surround that painting with like a bigger frame for that photo, like this, even though the painting is the same size, you created space around it, therefore it's taking up more space on the wall, therefore, and as a whole, it looks bigger. So that's kind of what I do with eyeshadow, is I go a little bit out and around to make it look bigger and more open. And like I said, everyone's gonna have different types of styles of makeup that they like, but me personally, people with hooded eyes, I like a classic smoky eye, which is darker at the lash line and lighter as it goes up or like a cat eye smoky eye, which is lighter in the inner corner and darker as it goes out. Those particular eye looks I think flatter pretty much everyone, but nowadays with all the cut creases and all that stuff that you see all the time, you might wanna try new things and get really frustrated with it. Like by all means, you can spend as many hours or days of the week trying to improve upon that technique, but there's something to be said for figuring out what truly flatters you, what's easy and practical, because I don't live on Instagram. Like I'm not gonna sit there and do looks like that that pretty much only look good on Instagram when my head's a certain way, my angle's a certain way. I do stuff that looks good in person and on camera. So I'm constantly pushing this shadow up. You have to pay attention to the way that you're holding your brush, because your brush is gonna go exactly where you tell it to go. If I hold it like this, it's depositing the color this way. If I hold it like this, it's pulling it up that direction. And I know that sounds like such duh information, but it truly does make a big difference the way that you hold your brush. And another good example of this is when you're doing one eye versus another. So a lot of times I hear people say that when they do their eyeliner or they do their eyeshadow, one eye just looks so different than the other one. And that's because one of your eyes is different than the other one. None of us are perfectly symmetrical unless you're Adriana Lima or something. So the way that you combat that, you're never gonna, it's not that it's impossible to make yourself perfectly symmetrical, but come on, like ain't nobody got time for that. So this is my, this is my more hooded eye. This is my normal eye, if you will. When I do this way, if you see how I'm holding my brush, I'm just moving in the direction that I want it to go in naturally because I'm right-handed and this is my left eye, so it's just a little easier to deal with. If I go over to this eye, I usually tilt, you guys don't see me do this on camera, there's a mirror right here. I tilt my head so that I'm getting the same view that I get over here because when I look at it the same way, on the other side of my face, I'm a lot more likely to create a similar shape than if I just keep my hand and my positioning the same way on this eye that I do this eye. It's just, it's just a little weird tip that moving the direction of your head when you're switching sides of your face makes a huge difference. Try it out, let me know. And it's kind of hard to explain some of this stuff on camera. I'm just giving you guys information that I hope you can like take into your real life and implement. But anyway, going back to what I was saying, you can tell, like, look how far out this corner is going. Once again, this is why I do my brows first, because my brow naturally stops right about here, and I take it out a little bit further. So if I didn't do my brows yet, I don't know, it might be kind of difficult for me to, to have a stopping point, if you will. Like, I never want my eyeshadow to come much further than my brow. I mean, you can do that. It looks pretty cool but, um, if you do it correctly, but on me... I just kind of want it to be slightly in line with my brow, but not touching my brow. I see that all the time where people kind of create this like, it's like a shape where it's like touching their brow. And when you do that, you don't have this lifted action anymore. It's going to pull you down. So if you do your brows first, you just have a really clear stopping point of where you want to take the shadow to and where you don't. But yeah, as I said before, this is going up and over. And like I said, when you have hooded eyes, I feel like your outer corner and your lash line is a good place to kind of hang out and work with. But I'm gonna move on to the darkest color. Um, not the darkest, but the next darkest color I'm gonna use in my crease. And for that, I'm taking an even smaller brush. And I'm really gonna hang out in this outer corner and pack it in there. I just wanna start it here, make sure I'm depositing and building up pigment. And then I'm gonna once again bring it in and I'm not gonna surpass the colors that I already 
laid down. I'm not bringing it down like this. I'm still following that initial line that we created, but I'm keeping it lower than the other colors because then you get that gradient effect as opposed to everything just kind of piling on top of itself. I have a mirror in my face when I do my makeup. It is a tiny little tip that I think makes a huge difference. Whenever I see my friends do their makeup and they're like in a bathroom with the mirror like five feet away and they're, I, I don't know, I just, I need to see what I'm doing. And also looking down into the mirror. So I don't have the mirror up like this because once again, when you have hooded eyes and you look straight on, you can't see anything. I tilt it and I look down into it so I can see the entire landscape of my eyelid. I don't know, but you can just see, this is all the colors we started with. This is adding the darker colors, but you can still see them peeking through a little bit. It gives it that natural gradient effect, as I said before, to kind of go in and keep your colors just a little stacked underneath each other. And then always go back with your bigger brushes and soften up your edges. Okay, this next bit is in direct response to a question that I get all the time about hooded eyes. A lot of people will tell me that when they apply a glittery or shimmery color right here on their lid, it transfers all over into their crease area. That's gonna come down to exactly what you're using. I know that when I use those Stila Glitter and Glow or whatever eyeshadows, that happens to me every time. It doesn't matter what I do. So I tend not to use those as a result. I don't know what it is about that formula that does it. But a good rule of thumb that will help you with that is to reprime your mobile lid. Hooded lids essentially mean you just have like more tissue on your eyelid area. So when you're looking straight up or ahead, it's kind of like this is already hanging pretty low. So this doesn't have to do much to make contact with that hood, if you will. I call them hoods. So the way that you can combat that, and it should work most of the time, is to reprime the mobile lid. You can do that with your existing eye primer. You can do it with a cream eyeshadow. You can do it with a concealer. You can do it with whatever you want. Today I'm using a silver cream shadow because I wanted to do like a gunmetal glittery spooky eye today. I don't know, I'm just feeling it. So what I do is I take some cream eyeshadow and I just put this all over the mobile lid. You can take it as high or as low as you want. I do this trick anytime I do a smoky eye. Even if I'm doing it with mattes, I just feel like it's easier to kind of reprime that eye and then go in and add your other colors. Always blend out that edge or it's gonna be a really, really harsh edge. You wanna blend that cream shadow into the outer corner. So taking a shimmery eyeshadow, in this case, it's Urban Decay Moon Spoon. I always kind of dampen the shadow a little bit with Fix Plus, don't do too much or it'll do the exact opposite of what you want. And now I'm gonna press this onto the mobile part of my lid. Now, not only will that base give it something to cling to and make it even more sparkly, but it'll also make sure that the shadow doesn't transfer all over just up into my crease. It'll stay where I put it, or it should. Usually it does. <laughs> I don't normally have problems with this. For me, that usually comes down to the product. Like I said, if I'm using something that's, I don't know, too wet or doesn't dry very well, I will have that issue. But if I do a cream shadow underneath any shimmery shadow I want to put on my lid. I just do not have issues with it transferring. Now don't think you have to go out and buy a million cream shadows if you want to try that trick. Like I said, you could just use concealer or your existing primer. So let's say I was doing a neutral eye. I would have just taken this and just reapplied it all over my mobile lid and blended it out and then applied my like pale champagne or white shimmery shadow. So like I said, don't think you have to go and stock up, up on a million different shadows to get the same effect. I'm gonna take a smaller brush and I'm gonna go in with some black. I used to put black in the outer corner of my eyeshadow look every time I did my eyeshadow. You don't have to do that. But I do feel like if you keep a darker color in this outer corner, so what it does is it immediately makes this part of your eye, your mobile lid in the center, bigger and brighter in comparison to the outer corner instantly. So I'll show you what I mean. So look at it first. And look at it now, like doesn't this, I don't know, am I crazy? I feel like 
This one now looks brighter than this one. Like my lid pops a little more on this side than this one now because this outer corner is darker. And that's part of color theory or I don't know if it would be considered color theory or if it's like how light works essentially. Like when you're painting or doing something with art, you're basically replicating the way light hits different things. And when light hits something round or bigger, it tends to kind of wash over the surface of it in a lighter to darker um, type of way. Does that make sense? <laughs> like sometimes it's hard to figure out how to explain things, but all I'm trying to say is if you can keep this outer corner considerably darker than the inner corner, it's really going to, it's going to beef up that smoky effect and it's going to make the front part of your eye a little more open looking as a result. I need to figure out how to better explain that. Just try it. That's all I'm trying to say. So moving on to eyeliner, I'm not doing anything too crazy with eyeliner. I will be doing a winged liner video soon. I've never done one before. And I do feel like on hooded eyes, it is a little bit different than maybe on not hooded eyes. But the main thing I can tell you guys about eyeliner on your hooded eyes, depending on the shape, this, that, and the third is I know you guys say my eyes are not downturned, but they are. Like it is so tiny in the outer corner compared to every other part of my eye. It's like one size here, bigger here, and really pinched out here, which isn't bad or good. It's just what I have going on. So I never take eyeliner like this. Like if you've noticed the way I've done everything, it's lifting and going up. I'm not gonna, emphasize downturned or small or closed in. I want lifted up. So when I do eyeliner, even if it's just something simple to hide my lash band, I start in the middle and I come up like this and then just drag it in. Keep the thickness on the outer corner and try to resist, like I said, following kind of this half moon shape downwards. Try to go like this. Do you see how my eyeliner pin is up here, not down here? That's because like I said, I don't want to drag down. So instead of coming down here, it's just up here. So for me, as you guys can tell from looking at my eye look right now, whenever I have on this much eyeshadow and the eyeshadow is going all the way up to here, I tend to want to keep my lash somewhere in this length. Sometimes I go a little over, but I don't like to keep the lash a whole lot lower than my eyeshadow. And if I'm not wearing any eyeshadow at all, I almost, I never wear lashes. I only wear them to kind of bring a little something extra to the overall look. But in general, like I said, depending on where you apply your eyeshadow or how high up you take it or whatever, the higher up it goes on me, the longer my lashes are. The lower it goes or the less eyeshadow I have on, the less of a lash I wear, if one at all. So that's just a quick tip. For me, having hooded eyes the way that I do, I kind of feel like if I don't have a little more length on them, they just kind of get lost in my eye hoods. I know it's a weird thing to say, but... Once again, what kind of makes a hooded eye what it is, is you just have more tissue or fat. I don't know what's in here. When, and therefore, when my eye is open, it's kind of getting sandwiched in between my mobile lid and my hood. So the longer they are, the more they can kind of stick out and be visible. And once again, that's gonna come down to what you actually want. If you don't want long bossy lashes, if that's not what, in your, what you're into, then obviously this does not apply. But because I do kind of like that exaggerated smoky eye, exaggerated lash look, this works for me. So off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of my makeup and I will be right back. Okay, so obviously the top of my eyeshadow look is complete. I'm gonna move on to the bottom now. This is a step I recommend everyone do, whether it's hooded eyes or otherwise, that rhymed hot bars. You just wanna take a primer. You could use your concealer if you want to, but for some reason, I kind of stick to using a very specific eye primer for this step and I'm just going to apply a little bit of that underneath my lower lash line. And then I always take a pencil brush and blend that primer out from inner corner to outer corner. If you have hooded eyes and you want to kind of bring some of this drama around the entirety of your eye because as I've already said a hundred times when you're looking dead on at me. 
You can't really see much by way of what's happening on my lid space. So that's a big part of why I do so much on my lower lash line. And that's also a big part of why I was telling you guys before the whole thing about the picture on the wall where if my eyes are the actual picture and the picture frame is lashes and the outer corner and the lower lash line, it's going to make your eyes look a lot bigger and wider and that's just the look that I prefer. If you guys don't like that, then you can skip this step completely, but if you do, here's how I do it. I'm gonna take a smaller pencil brush and in this case, I'm just gonna go in with a mix of like a warm red brown and a deep brown color and then I load up that brush, tap it off and I start smoking out the lash line, keeping as much of the depth that I can on this outer corner. I definitely bring it all the way in. I know some people prefer to keep it mostly on the outer part. You can do that. Once again, this will come down to personal preference and what kind of aesthetic you prefer. But for me, I don't mind like a bossy all the way around the eye smoky situation. But this also serves another purpose it's going to help us keep a lot of that depth on our outer corner, which like I said before, is a good way to further create shape and dimension on the eye. So really what I'm doing is I'm connecting this outer corner of my lower lash line to the outer corner of my eyeshadow and I'm just dragging it out a little bit. And then if you can tell like, my eye just looks way bigger now. It has way more shape, way more depth because we focus so much, once again, darkness of color out here. You can leave it as bold or as blended as you want, but I tend to just kind of go back and forth to get it exactly where I want it to be with my pencil brush and with a blending brush. But once I've laid down kind of that first pass of color, I tend to just stay out in this corner. I'm gonna take some black, which is even darker, and focus that out there. Because that's really going to, once again, it just makes this part look a whole lot more glittery and sparkly and vibrant and bright because it's so dark out here. So one thing I will say with the lower lash line is you do wanna hug the tear duct. Like, because my inner corner and my outer corner are smaller than the center of my eye, that's similar to what I want this line of shadow to do. So I want it to be tighter here, it can come out a little here, and I let it be a little bit bigger out in this corner, but I don't want it to be as thick here as it is here. Once again, that comes down to personal preference. I just think it's a little more flattering um, but I've also seen people take it all the way down here, you know, as dark as they want and it still looks really cool. That's kind of the hard thing about doing tutorials is I can tell you how to do looks that I prefer and what I think looks best, but you can edit this down and um, subtract or even add more if you want to. It's totally, totally your game. You do what you want. And then usually what I do is I'll take an eyeliner, especially if I'm going for a super smoky look like I'm doing today, and I'm just gonna put it in the waterline, once again, I'm bringing it underneath the lash line in the outer corner. And then super quick, you don't wanna let this dry or it won't smudge. You just wanna take a flat shader brush and then you'll just kinda smudge it out. So if you're looking straight on at me now, we've created a similar type of situation on the lower lash line that we did on the top in that it's lighter here and it gets darker and kinda bigger out here. And that's the same thing we did under here. It's a little lighter here and it kind of like grows the further to the outer corner that it gets. All right guys, this is the finished look. I hope that I was able to teach you something today about some tips and tricks that will help you with your hooded eye shadow game. But I do think a lot of these would be pretty useful to just about anybody. I will do videos in the next couple of weeks about false lashes, winged eyeliner, and in the near future, I would love to get some other models here on my channel to show you different things you can do with different features that I just do not have. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed it, make sure you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much to the patrons. We just had our third live stream over there the other day. I told them a lot of this stuff because they were just asking me questions about it. And um, I would like to continue to do live streams around that type of subject matter. So if you wanna have like a kind of 
one, not, it wouldn't be a one-on-one, -on -one, it's a live stream, but a kind of intimate Q&A session with me about makeup, Patreon is a great place to do that. Also, don't forget to check out the War Paint Facebook group and the podcast War Paint will be going live everywhere in November. I will announce the date very, very soon. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms and I will catch you in the next one.